thought I'd go from more conventional to less conventional in the line. That's good. That's always good. Start with our stout, which is a uh, pretty middle of the road Irish stout. Uh, malty, lots of uh, roasted uh, malt character. You get those coffee and chocolate like notes on the nose. Uh huh. And. Uh, it's served on a nitrogen pour, so it's got a very silky, creamy uh, mouth feel. Anything notable you do with the, the making of this stout that you, I don't know, different technique or different approach or no, it's pretty fair, straightforward? It's a fairly straightforward stout. Uh, we, uh, we use flaked oats in the mash, uh -huh. so uh, those have to be thrown in directly as we're mashing in the other grains. Uh, which isn't something that we do with the majority of our beers, where the malt goes through the mill. Okay. Next up we have our old ale, which is called Old Blue Eyes. Uh, it's 9.1% alcohol, so it's hefty. Uh, smooth and malty with uh, very little hop character. Quite oaky. Uh, uh -huh. We use oak chips in the serving tank uh, to give it a a woody uh, quality that comes out strongly in the nose. Yeah, definitely. Sort of almost smells uh, like a whiskey. Mm -hmm. But I'm not much of a whiskey drinker, and I, I prefer an old ale any day. Uh, old ales are very tasty, uh, but at 9.1%, there's limits to how much you can drink. Uh, yeah. What are the what are the per style parameters of an old ale that you know sort of that you try and hit? well in the uh, in the Great American Beer Festival the style right. categories that they set up for the beer judge certification program uh, it is one of three categories in uh, strong ales uh, you have American style barley wine which is big and hoppy and bold in just about every way. You have English style barley wine, which is hoppy but not quite as much so as the American version. Typically somewhat lower in alcohol as well and somewhat maltier. Maltier, yeah. And then you have old ales which are essentially you know unhopped. Uh, hops are used for uh, bittering the beer so as to give it some balance because any beer that is that strong is going to have quite a lot of malty body uh, and would taste absurdly sweet if you didn't use any hops right. at all. But you use just enough to sort of balance that off without getting any uh, real impact from the, the flavor of the hops themselves. Right. Um, so it's a beer which is really all about the malt. Um, and ours is at 9.1%, which is sort of the middle of the range for an old ale. They tend to go from about seven and a half to maybe ten and a half uh, percent alcohol, but that's substantially lower than barley wines. Right. English barley wines usually run nine to eleven, American barley wines ten to twelve. So uh, it's the least hefty of the strong ales. Okay. But at nine point yeah. one it's not a it, it, not a slouch. No, it's uh, it's it's not a mild beer. <laughs> cool. Third in the lineup is uh, our signature pale ale called Cali Kush, which is brewed with a little bit of locally harvested uh, Artemisia Californica, which is a form of sagebrush prevalent all over Southern California. Uh, we essentially use it in place of finishing hops in the boil, uh, and it gives it a, uh, a very sage-like uh, aroma that always reminds me of going for a hike in the countryside in Southern California. Good. Always a favorite of mine, that one. Stuff. The last one we have in the lineup is not technically a beer. It is a mead, which is honey wine. Uh, this is our rasbiscus mead, so it's a uh, honey wine brewed with honey, malt extract, raspberry puree, hibiscus flowers, water, and uh, brewer's yeast, which is an unconventional approach to beverage making in general. Even uh, what few commercial mead makers are out there would probably not be familiar with uh, 
uh, anyone who's using ale yeasts uh -huh. to make mead, but I think it works out just fine. I think it's great. It's really great. Uh, so what, what inspired you to work with mead as, you know, as opposed to just the regular beers and stuff? Well, I began making mead as a home brewer. Oh, yeah? And uh, when I took the reins as brewer here at, uh, at Breakwater, I decided that it was sort of a shame that there's essentially no other breweries making mead yeah. uh, out there. There are a handful of, of meaderies, uh, but uh, most meaderies tend to produce their, their meads in a manner that resembles wine making more than beer making. Uh -huh. uh, my methods sort of split the difference, and I'm as a home brewer, I had had any number of successful runs, so I, uh, I chose a recipe that I considered tried and true and scaled it up. Um, it's been popular ever since we first got it on tap, which was in January of this year. So. Very good. Yeah, really cool and totally unique. Yeah. Love it. Great. Thank you, Lars. Awesome.